Next topic is a topic that's kind of interesting. It stands for Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, SETI project. The SETI project kind of informally got started during the 1960s when we started developing radio telescopes and we got interested to communicate possibly with an uh, alien civilization and hope we hope that we can find signals of uh, alien civilization. So in particular, not only do they use the radio range, but they use a particular range within the radio range known as the water hole, okay? So we'll, we'll talk about the water hole for a second. Let me show you these interesting figures. The, the SETI project, you see this big telescope? This is known as the Arecibo Telescope in Puerto Rico. It's the largest radio telescope in the world, 300 meters in diameter. Uh, one of the Bond movies, GoldenEye, was uh, filmed here towards the end of the film. He's sliding down the, the telescope. If you haven't seen it, uh, you should watch that. It's a good film. Uh, but it, it was uh, filmed here. It's in Puerto Rico. Now, if you look here at the top, the, that's the telescope used by the SETI project. So they, they use the, the radio telescope in Puerto Rico and then they piggyback off of that and then they have their own telescope um, that's supported by cables. And then they look for specifically a certain range within the radio telescope. They wanna hear certain intelligible, repeated, repeated signals from outer space. Not just a signal, but a signal that's repeating and with an intelligent pattern. And they haven't found one yet, of course, because if they had, we would have heard about it. Um, <coughs> yeah, this is a uh, city project is funded by NASA. Yeah. This top one was sent by the Arecibo Puerto Rico um, uh, telescope. It was a message sent to the M13 galaxy some 20,000 uh, light years away. So it has different things coded in there, um, different information. Of course, it's gonna take 20,000 years or so to get there. If anybody gets it, then if, they, if there is somebody there, they send it back 20,000 years. So of course, we have no hope of getting this information back, but this is a message that was sent through that uh, Puerto Rico telescope. These bottom two ones were different. This one was a plaque that was placed in the Pioneer 1 and 2, uh, uh, Pioneer 11 and 12, uh, this one here. And then this one was a CD that was placed in Voyager 1 and 2. So this one, it, it's making its way out of the solar system now. And so it's again a way of, for us to communicate. It's giving you hyperfine transition of neutral hydrogen, silhouette of the spacecraft, binary equivalent of decimal A. So basically the idea is if anyone ever discovers our satellite, opens it up, they're gonna find this plaque and then hopefully they can uh, interpret that information. The position of the sun relative to 14 pulsars and then they have some drawings about our solar system, planets of solar system and binary relative distances and so on. <coughs> There's some more information there that they can uh, decode and find out more information about us. This one was sent through the Voyager 1 and 2 spacecrafts, Voyager 1 and 2. So this one was roughly around 1973 with the Pioneer 11 and 12. This one was Voyager 1 and 2, 1977. And it's inside of that, uh, them. It has recordings, uh, voice recordings in an old phonograph style, um, voice recordings of children's voices, other information about uh, our planet, who we are, what we are all about, and stuff like that. So hopefully whoever gets it, plays it, finds out information. Hopefully if they're trying to do damage to us, they hear the children's voices in there, it'll stop them from coming and killing us. Uh, I guess that's why they put the children's voices, but um, so uh, this is all part of the information, part of our attempt to try to communicate with someone out there. You know what, one day it is gonna happen. It's probably, they're out there, but it's gonna be many, many, many years after we, de we are dead that uh, these kinds of things are gonna happen. But uh, the age of the Star Trek, I predict 
is most likely going to happen. 500 years later, maybe, thousands of years later, we have no clue, you know. <coughs> so as I said, the SETI project uses a particular range within the radio spectrum. It's known as the water hole, but it has nothing to do with the water as we know it, the water molecule. The reason they call it that, it's a convenient way to remember, to remember it. This range happens to coincide with the absorption lines of hydrogen and hydrogen peroxide, H and OH. <coughs> See here, uh, H and OH. This is hydrogen, this is hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is what you use, it's kind of like alcohol, you put it uh, when you have a cut or something and it helps to heal and it helps to uh, prevent from, bacteri from getting bacterial infection. So these two molecules, their absorption line happens to correspond in the radio frequency. And the reason this frequency range is very good is because not a lot of other sources in our solar system and in our galaxy radiate naturally in this range. So it's free from what we call noise, okay? So this graph is showing you that if we use a range with a lower frequency, we have a galact uh, galactic radio background. The, the, our galaxy radiates in that range, and it would in interfere with anything that we were hearing. So we don't like that. If we use a frequency higher than that, uh, then we have absorption by oxygen in Earth's atmosphere, absorption by water in Earth's atmosphere, cosmic microwave background. The other kinds of noises would interfere. So the red line is showing you the background noise level. So you see between these two range, the background noise is very low. What does that mean? If you are listening in that frequency range and you happen to hear an intelligent signal that is repeated, it is most likely then from a civilization, not from a star, not from a galaxy or any other natural phenomenon. So that's why they like to hone in on this range because nothing else radiates in this range, you see. So the reason they call it the water hole is because H and HO make what? H2O, H2O which is water. So that's an easy way to remember what it stands for. <coughs> so they use this range because it has minimum disturbance from Earth and any other outer space noise. So if you had to take your FM station, and if you wanted to listen to this range, you would have to dial it all the way up to roughly 1,500 FM. So it's in the radio range, you see? But notice, nobody here on Earth uses 1,500 FM, right? Typically, FM ends around what frequency? What station is the last station of FM? 107.9, I think, 108. Maybe some people might have a, uh, another radio that might go up higher, let's say 150 or 200 FM. But 1500 FM, no one. So it's a higher frequency than the FM. AM is lower frequency. AM would be kilohertz. So uh, forget AM. But FM is a higher frequency. But the highest frequency we use for the FM is uh, uh, 110. So on this map, <coughs> you see, F, the FM that we use would be kind of in this range. You see, this is the typical FM right here. Uh, what did we say? 100, uh, it ends around 100. So this is 100, 102.7 would be here, KISS FM. <laughs> 100, 102.7. And 107 would be right here, FM. Then you go 500 FM, but no one uses that. This is 1,000 FM. And then this is about 1,500 FM. You see? This one here. 1,500 FM. And then this is 10,000 FM. But so that, that's why you kind of see where the regular, the ones that we listen to are over here. And then this is the range of the water hole. 
So that's the range they listen to. But of course, so far, they haven't heard anything repeated that's intelligent. They have heard things, but it hasn't repeated at all. Um, <coughs> they encourage civilians to help them in their search. They have a free program. If you'd want to join them, you go on their website. It's known as SETI at Home. It's funded by uh, the Na NASA, and they are based off of UC Berkeley. So that's why the web address is Berkeley. And there's a free program that you can download to your computer, and then in the background, as you are doing other things, your computer will help analyze uh, data that is coming into the Arecibo telescope, okay? Your computer will take part in this search. And you might be like uh, Jody Foster in that movie, Contact. Uh, if you hear it first and you get call into the um, uh, station, you know, call into the headquarters, say, I hear something intelligent, repeated, you'll become um, famous. You'll be in the movies. So there's a whole, there's a movie about that called Contact, played by Jodie Foster. 